So the topic about which I've been asked to speak tonight is the making of an investment banker. And I would start by saying investment banking is hard. It's also extraordinarily rewarding. It's fiercely competitive. Most people in this room won't succeed as investment bankers. Or maybe not in this room, but in most rooms, to most groups of people to whom I speak, most of them would not succeed in investment banking. So I'm hopeful that tonight, the comments that I'm going to make, the speech, the advice that I'm going to give you will help you increase the chances of your success as an investment banker if you choose to pursue a career in investment banking. I'm gonna divide my talk into three parts. Part one is the interview, getting the job. Part two is keeping the job how to succeed as a young analyst or associate investment banker. And part three is excelling at the job, how to become an elite senior investment banker. Mm. So part one, the interview. So all of you are at this incredibly competitive, fantastic university. All of you have great grades, hopefully. And you're all here tonight because you want to learn. You want to better yourselves. You want to improve your chances of getting a job in investment banking and of having a successful career in investment banking. Those are all very, very, very good things. So I'm going to give you four pieces of advice around the interview, which if you follow, will help you walk out of that interview with a job offer. Now, I'm assuming that you will satisfy the basic requirements of an interview. So this list is not exhaustive. It's four things that you need to do on top of the basic requirements of an interview. And there are many. I'm assuming, for example, that you have done research on the company for which you are interviewing. I'm assuming that you can project confidence in the interview. I'm assuming you can walk someone, an interviewer, through your resume. I'm assuming those things and a whole host of other givens that I'm going to stipulate that hopefully you've satisfied. In addition to those, here are four pieces of advice I would give you. Two things you should do prior to the interview, two things you should do in the interview. Prior to the interview, all of you should be reading the Wall Street Journal every single day. Read the Wall Street Journal every single day. Three articles from the Wall Street Journal. One article on a macroeconomic topic like inflation or interest rates. One article on a specific industry, company, or transaction. So for example, a recent merger transaction that's been announced, or a recent IPO that's been announced or a company that's recently announced earnings. There'll be an article about whether those earnings are good or bad and why. One article on a specific company transaction. And thirdly, an article from the op-ed page. Three articles every day, no matter what, no exceptions. It'll take about 15 minutes a day, it's not hard. If you do that, you'll be amazed at how much you know, how much you've learned after six months or 12 months, you'll be amazed. You will know an incredible amount substantively after six months or a year. You will also, by the way, begin to decipher the jargon that we use as investment bankers, the jargon that we speak in, and that will help you in your interview and in your job. So read the Wall Street Journal, start reading it early on, Every day, three articles, 15 minutes. Second thing you should do before the interview, become familiar with the three financial statements. Become familiar with the three financial statements. Know what they are. If you don't know now, that's okay. Look them up. Ideally, take a class in financial accounting and be facile with how these financial statements interact with each other. Uh and be able to analyze them at least at a basic level. Be 
familiar with the three financial statements. Two things you should do in the interview. One, what topic do people enjoy talking about the most? Answer is? Themselves. Very good. Themselves. That may sound cynical, but that is a psychological fact. People enjoy most talking about themselves. So in the interview, you want to get the interviewer to talk about himself or herself. That should be a primary goal. You ask questions like, why did you decide to become an investment banker? Why did you decide to work at XYZ firm? What's the most interesting transaction you worked on and why? Get the interviewer to talk about themselves. If you do that, they're gonna enjoy the interview a lot more, which is good for you, one. And two, by asking these questions, these personal questions, you will elicit the most authentic and genuine responses. You will learn the most. So get the interviewer to talk about himself or herself. Second thing you should do in the interview, avoid questions that lend themselves to yes, no answers. Ask questions that are open-ended, that require sentences as answers, ideally multiple sentences as answers. You want this interview to be a dialogue, not an interrogation. Ask open-ended questions. Those are the four things you should do surrounding the interview. In addition to all of the basics that I'm assuming you've satisfied. If you do those four things, you are more likely to walk out of the interview with an offer. If you do them, you do them well. Second part of the talk, keeping the job. How to succeed as a young analyst or young associate in an investment bank. Six pieces of advice. First piece of advice, find a rare model. Find a rare model. Your criteria for selecting the rare model is singular purely merit-based. You want to find the person who's an analyst, if that's what you are, or an associate, if that's what you are, who's one or two years ahead of you and is the best at the job. You don't have to have a lot in common with them. You don't even have to like them. You want to find the person who's the best, and then you want to model your behavior at work after that person. There's no reason to recreate the wheel, right? If someone's doing the job very, very well, and is generally recognized as being very, very good, in fact, maybe the best, learn is watch that person, study that person, learn as much as you can by watching them, and then model your behavior after them. Second piece of advice, make it clear that you have no ego. Make it clear that you have no ego. Make it clear that you have no task that's given to you, that there is no task that's given to you that is beneath you. There's no task too menial for you. Make it clear to the team that you're willing to do whatever is necessary for the team to succeed. In fact, early on in your career as an analyst, let's say, in the first month or as an associate, volunteer for the menial tasks. Go get coffee. Make copies. Make it clear you have no ego. Number three, take notes. Some of you are doing that tonight. Take notes. When you're in a meeting with a client, a prospective client, a superior, take notes. You want to do that because it conveys to the people in the room that you're serious. It also conveys to the people who are talking that what they're saying is important, you're writing it down. And thirdly, and most importantly, it gives them a sense of comfort that you're not gonna forget what happened in the meeting or the follow-up tasks that you have to accomplish after the meeting. The analogy I always like to use with this is, if you go to dinner with a group of your friends and there's six of you at the table at a restaurant, and the waiter comes over 
and he takes your orders and one at a time each of you order and he doesn't write anything down. He says, terrific, I'll be back with your orders and he leaves. I don't know about you, but I'm sort of wondering in 30 minutes, am I gonna get the salad that I ordered or am I getting meatloaf, right? You have no idea because there's nothing written down. It doesn't inspire confidence and he didn't recap what the orders were. Now, they look impressive, and I don't care if you have a photographic memory, take notes, write things down. And then in a meeting with your superior afterwards, walk through the list of follow-up items that you have. Tick them off. Say to your boss, I will have the memo rewritten by tomorrow at noon. I'm going to rerun the model with the new numbers. The other follow-up item I have from the meeting is I'm supposed to call XYZ person or write a text to ABC person. Recap the meeting and your follow-up items with your boss. It will put your boss's mind at ease. Even if you know them all, even if you're not gonna forget them all, it will make your boss feel like, okay, it's okay. He's got this, she's got this. I don't need to worry about it. Take notes. Number four, work hard. Make no mistake, the most successful analysts and associates in investment banking are the hardest workers, period, full stop. It doesn't matter if you're a good golfer, if you can schmooze well, doesn't matter if you can play tennis well, or you know something about professional sports, that doesn't matter. What matters is how hard are you willing to work? Be prepared for that. It's hard, work hard. Number five, related to number four. First impressions die hard. Good first impressions die hard and bad first impressions die hard. So be very responsive, especially early on. There's nothing more frustrating for a senior investment banker than to send an email or a text to an analyst or an associate and have that email or text go unanswered for an extended period of time. Don't let that happen, particularly early on. Be available, be responsive. People like to extrapolate. If the first five interactions they have with you, you're super responsive, you never drop a ball, they're gonna extrapolate from there and assume that behavior is gonna continue. If the first five interactions with you, you're unresponsive and you forget a bunch of things, they're gonna extrapolate in a negative direction and it's incredibly hard to recover from that. First impressions, die hard, make good ones. Be available, be responsive, don't make mistakes, particularly early on. <clears throat> Number six, piece of advice. As a young associate or young analyst, never stop learning. So in year two, day three, you should be reading the Wall Street Journal every day. In year three, day four, you should be reading the Wall Street Journal every day. Every day. You may read more articles, you may read different articles, but read it every day. Ask questions of your peers, ask questions of your superiors. Approach the second and third year the same way you approached the interview, with that same zest, zeal, that same sense of intensity. Be curious, ask questions, never stop learning. The most successful analysts and associates do that. They never stop. They never rest on their laurels. Third part of the presentation, how to become an elite senior investment banker, how to really excel at this job. Six pieces of advice. First, give your client advice that is the best advice for the client, even if, and in particular if, it is contrary to your own interests. There's no better way to establish credibility with a client than to give them advice that they know is contrary to your interest. Give that advice, no matter what. Second, take a position. Don't equivocate. The client has hired you to advise them. Tell them what to do. That's what they've hired you for. 
Don't give them five options and say, you know, pick one. You pick one. Advocate for it. It's okay to present options, but advocate for one. Tell them what you would advise them to do. That's what they've hired you for. Take a position, don't equivocate. Number three, embrace and relish in adversity. Adversity is what makes you better, stronger at this job. Relish it. It's easy for, particularly for young professionals these days, to want to take and to take shortcuts. It's easy in particular because we have phones and the internet and there's a lot of answers at our fingertips now, right? So if someone's asked you to build a model, an Excel model to perform some task at work, you could probably look up on the internet a model that will do that. Resist that temptation. Build your own model. Resist the temptation to take shortcuts. Live in the trenches because the best investment bankers lived in the trenches. Their skills were forged there. Relish adversity, you will come out of it stronger. Don't be disappointed, afraid, angry when you encounter it. View it, embrace it, and view it as something that will make you stronger. Number four, master discipline. This job requires incredible discipline. Master it, inside and outside of your work. This means different things to different people. To some people, it means remaining physically fit. To others, it means time management. Master discipline. Don't procrastinate. Don't let items build up in your inbox. Keep lists, don't procrastinate. Be extraordinarily disciplined, master it. Number five, excel on the merits. If you're really good at what you do, if you're one of the best investment bankers, it's a lot easier to avoid spending time on things that you don't want to spend time on. And you'll have much more control over what you do at work and what you do outside of work. A lot of people ask me, what's the best way to achieve work-life balance? The answer is, be really, really good at what you do. No one is gonna give you a hard time if you're the best investment banker at the firm or among the best for taking some time off to do something that you like to do. In fact, in fact, taking a lot of time off for doing something that you like to do. Excel on the merits. Number six, final piece of advice. Never, ever give up. Adopt that mantra as part of your life. Don't take no for an answer. Apply this in everything you do from getting reservations at a restaurant, to getting a job, to getting a new client. Never, ever, 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 ever give up. Don't take no for an answer. What separates the good investment bankers from the great investment bankers is the great investment bankers never, ever give up.